Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. May 17th, 2021. Minutes to go to the cash close here on this Monday afternoon. The S&P's backing down minimally by some 13 handles. The NASDAQ taking about a 100 handle hit. I got to tell you, there is still that uh, that feeling in the air of volatility kind of emergent in this marketplace. Nevertheless, it is the financials. They're just like the glue inside of the S&P 500. The financials are keeping this marketplace afloat. Let's break down some of the trade uh, from today. But much more importantly, as I was saying a moment ago, right, volatility, this is important. And it's actually what I want to lead off with tonight. All right. First and foremost, you can take a look at the volatility futures till you're blue in the face. But the volatility futures that you might be looking at are the two-day volatility futures. You really need to be looking further out in time, like the 30-day vol futures. And again, I'm going to get to details of exactly why. The 30-day volatility futures at this point in the game, they are trading some serious size out there. And people, they're up. They're up, but what the s and p's are down a whopping 0.3 percent it's not just the volatility futures it's the vix up by the tune of seven percent look down the list some of the usual suspects here you look at the the v vix the volatility the volatility index rockets back up to the handle of 121 and i put a question mark on that right now because I'm not seeing, if you will, any, you know, there's there's no heavy sell side activity in here, right? Again, the S&Ps, they're down 12. I get it. The NASDAQ is off here a little bit. The Russell's actually positive. The, the Dow is massively unchanged over here. Why is volatility rocking? I mean, you can't point to the bonds. The bonds are unchanged as well. But every volatility product that I'm watching here, whether it's a uh, short-term VIX, this is the uh, the nine-day VIX, it took back off to the upside. Yeah, it abated a little bit during this trading session, but it's still up. It's still going to end up by the tune of almost 10%. This is actually the three-month volatility. People, that's a fairly substantial bid. And again, the uh, the VIX is back up in the 120 handle. What gives? That's just, it's kind of like a warning shot being fired. And if you're not paying attention, you might be missing the fact that risk is still pricing into the marketplace. There's another aspect on the front of volatility that I wanted to mention. So we look at the SPX and the expected move day to day, week to week. And this week's expected move, it was just shy of about 80 points. So We've already passed through this entire trading session here on a Monday, right? And the expected move, you would have anticipated it to abate more than it has. Again, given the fact that today there's not, you know, all that much, you know, volatility going on. The S&Ps are off some 13 handles. Nevertheless, we're still sitting on almost a $70 expected move. So for the remainder of the week, you can kind of sit, if you will, like a little bit pins and needles. Now, as I was saying, I don't see a huge amount of volatility inside of the S&Ps. Obviously, the NASDAQ's taking it on the chin a little bit. You start to look over at like advanced decline line. It's an absolute veritable slop fest, okay? And it is. It's almost a 50-50 advanced decline line. You can look at the calendar. The only thing really coming this week, all right, you got the FOMC minutes. Maybe, maybe you know, it's PMI day around the world on Friday. But again, it kind of begs the question, what does the marketplace see right now that's keeping volatility relatively bid and i'm going to tell you right now i don't necessarily have an answer for you because again <clears throat> there are going to be times where the marketplace is like seeking a catalyst and it's bidding volatility up looking for that catalyst okay and for the most part we're ready to rock that's the only takeaway from that is that this marketplace is ready to substantiate a, a decent sized move given the fact again that volatility is getting its feet back under it again there is a bid under volatility all right switching gears just a little bit as i was saying is the financials they continue to keep the s p 500 afloat and this just it cannot be emphasized enough the most recent move inside of the financials, I mean, really since the start of the year, and if you look at it on a year-to-date basis, you're roughly at 30% year-to-date basis. Nevertheless, we'll bring up like auto expected moves. The financials continue to actually kind of retrench. They're up a whopping 0.2%. 
But that's not the point. It's it's not that they're up, you know, oh, and they're not really keeping anything afloat. Listen, they refuse to back off. Last week, and this, again, cannot be overstated, last week, the financials, I mean, they actually finished the week mildly higher. And it was a week that was fairly tumultuous volatility. Here we are again with the financials actually picking up right into today's cash close. Nevertheless, it is the most pivotal sector right now, okay, bar none. And I know that we can obviously point out the energy sector. And the energy sector actually finished last week unchanged. This week, the energy sector is just shy already of the edge of its expected move. But the energy sector, I mean, come on, the entire energy sector combined, it doesn't even equal the market cap for example, of something like the, the magnitude of Amazon. So uh, the energy sector unto itself is not going to be enough to be a key market mover. So again, kind of what gives in this marketplace, the fact that, uh, again, the financials, they are what are literally are holding the marketplace together. And I think there's some great opportunity, as I was mentioning this in the weekend update, Wells Fargo, Citi, JP Morgan. I mean, you look at a few of these underlines, and again, on a year-to-date basis, JP Morgan up some 30%. I mean, this has become, if you will, the lifeboat for the S&P 500, and that is some of the financials. I mean, can you imagine hopping in a lifeboat with Jamie Dimon? No, thanks. Let me, let me drown. Nevertheless, okay, look around on a percentage basis at a handful of the products, Citi. Okay, Bank of America up 42% a year-to-date basis. Morgan Stanley, again, Wells Fargo. And again, I cannot stress this enough. The reason I brought up Wells Fargo, it's 61%. That's why actually what I started with, 61% a year-to-date basis. It's been a straight run to the upside. Hence, okay, one of the reasons I've also initiated a number, okay, very minute, but a number, there's the closing bell. This is actually why I've actually instituted a number of short positions specific inside of Wells Fargo. Everything from a synthetic short stock position using a deep in the money put to an in-out spread I've actually used inside of Wells Fargo. Take advantage of the fact that, hey, it may not necessarily happen tomorrow, but a 61% return okay, on a year-to-date basis, it's a little bit alarming. Okay, Maybe the marketplace is already anticipating this. And Possibly one of the reasons we're bidding up volatility. Nevertheless, with all of the terminology and being thrown around around inflation and stagflation, you have to make the assumption that some of the financials, I mean, these are going to be, all right, at the market's mercy if we actually do start to see movement on the interest rate front due, uh, due of course, to inflation. With, uh, with that, let's actually come back over to the S&Ps. Again, it's a rather light day, about 1.4 million contracts, all right? Everything looks a little sloptastic. Yeah, the NASDAQ got tagged a little bit predominantly. That's coming out of the likes of Tesla, a bit out of Microsoft. But again, the big takeaway from today's trading session is undoubtedly the fact that volatility is bid. And with that, we should anticipate, all right, some fairly tumultuous movement throughout the course and the remainder, if you will, of this week. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.